Good morning and welcome to St. Bonaventure as we gather to celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. There will be mowing of the parish grounds on Wednesday. Daily Masses will change during the week so you'll need to check the bulletin carefully. Our opening hymn is number 299, Holy, Holy, Holy. Please stand and join in singing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Prepared for those who love you, good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who reveal themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free of profanation and hold my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is a reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gift and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of the disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in that order by virtue of the mercy shown to you. They too may now receive mercy, for God delivered all to disobedience that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord.
Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Praise you, Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage and said, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you know what the name Catholic means? We call ourselves Catholic. It's a name that comes from very early on in the life of the church. The name Christian, now that might be much easier to understand what that means, comes from Jesus Christ. But what about Catholic? Both of those words, Catholic and Christian, come from the Greek. And Catholic is the Greek word meaning universal. So the Catholic Church is the universal church. It's the one church into which God desires to gather all peoples, the one family into which persons of all backgrounds are invited to belong. You know, we live in a world that often divides people into groups pitting one identity against another. And our own human tendency can be, at times, to have a kind of wariness of others who may be unlike myself. Or maybe even have a suspicion or to distance yourself from those you feel might be different. And we see this kind of human thinking from the disciples in the Gospel today. As Jews in their religion, in their culture, they were very different from their neighbors, the Canaanites. And they usually did not wish to associate with them at all. And thus, they wanted Jesus to send this Canaanite woman away. But this is a human attitude. It's not a Catholic one. It is not universal enough for God. In the Old Testament, God had set the Jews apart in certain ways as his chosen people. And it was to them that God first spoke through the prophets, his plan of love, and then came to dwell among us in the fullness of time when God became man in Jesus Christ. But God didn't set the Jews apart from everybody else to exclude all other people from his love. No, God's plan from the very beginning was always to be universal, to be Catholic. So we hear in the first reading from Isaiah today about the inclusion of all the non-Jewish individuals into the people of God. He says, my house shall be a house of prayer for all peoples. To God, it doesn't make any difference the specific time, place, culture someone happens to be born into. What matters is that Will we accept his invitation to be joined to him? So St. Paul in the second reading, he says, 
he's writing this to, primarily to the Gentiles. And this term Gentiles referred to anybody who wasn't Jewish. So St. Paul, who himself was a Jew, he became the first apostle to the Gentiles, to those who were not Jews, to preach the good news of Jesus Christ to them so that they might receive this invitation to join God's universal people, the Catholic Church. And I would guess that probably most of us culturally, if we go back in time with our ancestors, most of us probably have Gentile origins rather than specifically Jewish ones. So that really attests to how the church has spread universally across the globe. God had not included the Gentiles, would you or I be a part of the church today? But God did intend his church to be universal. In the gospel, it appears at first that Jesus is going to exclude this Canaanite woman. You know, first he's silent, and, and then when she asks that his daughter, that her daughter be healed, he says, I was sent only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is not right to take the food of children and throw it to the dogs. But even though Jesus says this, he has no intention of excluding this woman based upon her being in a different culture. No. What he's doing is he's, he's testing her faith. Is she simply coming to him because she's seeking a kind of free miracle? Or... Does she actually wish to join herself to God? And since she holds fast in her persistence and trust, Jesus rewards her faith with the miraculous healing of her daughter. O woman, great is your faith. So we can consider how do we look upon others who maybe at first human glance may appear to be so different from us. Do we allow differences in the way someone might think or look or talk to automatically exclude them? Because that is not the Catholic way. That is not the universal church. For example, when we see non-Catholic Christians, we understand them as our brothers and sisters in the faith, though at this time still separated in many ways from complete unity. Or, if we look at, our, at the Jews today, we understand that the Jewish people to be our older brothers and sisters in the faith. And we ought to have a deep respect for them because it was out of their faith that we have ours today. And even if we find it difficult to find connections with someone, we can always go to the deepest understanding of who we are, that... All of us are made in God's image. That no person that we meet is without dignity and worth to our Almighty Father. Every person that we meet is invited to become a member of God's family. So invite them. And that is how universal our thinking must be. That is what it means to be Catholic. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we bring our needs before our Heavenly Father. For the protection and strengthening of the church wherever she is persecuted, and that the peace of Christ will bring an end to all violent conflict in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve our country and the armed forces, that God will bless them and keep them out of harm's way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strengthening of marriage, that the Lord will fill couples with virtue and love that endures all things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that those who suffer will experience redemptive meaning of suffering through friendship with Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to live with greater faith, free from doubt, fear, from dis fear and discouragement, uh, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a safe and productive school year for our students and instructors. We pray for God's heart of love, mercy, and truth to dwell in us and show us how to face the challenges posed by COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our farming and ranching communities be blessed with favorable weather during the growing season, and may our families and communities be blessed with fortitude and economic stability. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. For the physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being of those who are sick, especially Clayton Dozler, Gloria Lordman, Jean Heidoff, Bert Kettler, and Laverne Nissen, and those from our parishes needing prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our greater family, the communion of saints, that the dead will know the merciful love of Christ. We pray for the souls of Hugo and Louise Werner, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For intentions and prayers dear to our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join offering our prayer for vocations. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, make, make us, us more, more holy each day, each day we pray. pray. Help us to embrace the way of life you plan for us, our vocation. Please protect and accompany all young men and women, especially from our parishes, who are called to vocation as priests, deacons, religious sisters or brothers, married couples or chaste singles. May they find joy in giving you their most, their best, their all. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. St. John Vianney, pray for us. Mary, most holy, pray for us. God, our Father, we place these needs in your hands, knowing you hear and answer them in accord with your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Seeds scattered and sown, wheat gathered and grown.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are clear. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those who are joining us from afar, we pray, pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 517, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.